Oh, I can't see a thing. That's never good news. Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today I actually plan on exploring a few different maps, all of them based around different SCP entries. I believe these are all made by the same creator as GM Crot, a pretty fantastic map which I previously explored on this channel. And I'm not familiar with all of the SCPs uh, in these maps, but I am familiar with this one, SCP-087, aka the never-ending stairs. This is actually a great one to start out with because this is probably the SCP that got me into the franchise to begin with. <sighs> because I just love the concept so much. It's the kind of thing that really allows SCP as a medium to shine. The kind of thing that wouldn't work on its own as a short horror story or a movie, but in the form of either an article or a standalone game, short horror experience is where something like this is really allowed to stretch its legs and shine for what it is. So basically, from what I remember, SCP-087 is a stairwell on a college campus that has been quarantined by the organization. Basically, subjects who enter the stairwell can go up or down for days at a time and never find any end. And also, my memory on it is pretty rusty. Oh, this is so scary in VR. My memory of it is pretty rusty, but I believe there may also be evidence of some entity occupying the stairwell, and I only have vague memories of the picture they used to show, but it was pretty creepy. They only have very vague images of whatever creature inhabits the stairwell from the head cameras of subjects who are sent down here. I don't like how those sounds are getting so much closer. Well, I suppose I'm getting closer to it, but... Oh, I don't remember this part of the story. This is that childhood fear that I crave, that fear of progressing. The actually being frozen in place, unable to move forward. I did... It's been a long time since I've gotten this scared this early in a video. Oh, there's just something away... Something about the way the sound design is done that sounds so realistic. It feels like whatever's in front of me is right in front of me, just beyond what my light can see. And is looking right at me. Well, I totally can't see it at all. Guys, I really don't want to do this. Oh, the things I do for this channel. The things I do for this channel. Oh. Now remember, the this map creator uh, previously spooked me in a very similar way with those sounds that played on the underground in GM Crot. But that was a much slower burn because it seemed like just a regular exploration map until... until I got into the very deepest depths of the facility. There's a new sound. Like a wind. Now, it's very windy outside my room right now, so I can't tell for sure if that's actually the game or if it's something that I'm hearing in real life. But, you know, that's not making me feel any more comfortable now that I think about it. I need to keep talking. I, I feel like it would be so much harder to play this if I weren't playing it for the channel, if I didn't have to keep talking for you guys. No, that's definitely... That's definitely not in real life. That's... That's a sound that's playing in-game. That breathing is definitely getting louder. It sounded like wind at first, but it's not wind. Oh, oh no. Oh no. 
Oh no, this flashlight's not doing me a ton of good right now. I know, I know, this has to culminate in a jump scare. And, you know, it's only recently occurred to me, I haven't really experienced a lot of just straight-up jump scares in VR. I am so scared for what's gonna happen when it finally hits. Whatever hits! And the longer it goes on, like, I... For as much as I don't want to get jump scared... I am... Stop. Why is my controller doing this right now? This is the only game it does this in. The longer it goes on, the worse it gets. Ugh. I'm just sprinting headlong into it at this point. And I also wonder, because I don't remember if the entry itself talks about this, I don't remember what would happen if I tried to go back up. I don't believe that works. Or maybe they could make their way back up to the door, but the door won't open. I don't remember. I think there may have been... I can't remember if there was an entry about somebody who actually managed to make it out of SCP-087. Oh, come on. Just do it. Just do it. I'm just sprinting forward at this point saying, just give me the jump scare. It sounds like it's right in my right ear. Just do it! <sighs> Guys, I really don't like this. I'm just waiting, waiting for the opportunity to take my headset off so I can look around the room and get some comfort before I start the next map. Come on. How long does this go on for? I mean, I know that's kind of the point, but I'm on a schedule here. Actually, it's always, I've noticed, it's always on my right side. So it's like whatever's breathing, it's like it's walking down the stairs as I'm progressing. <laughs> like it's always moving away from me. Okay, just do it, just do it, just do it! Okay, that was... There's more? I don't remember this! Oh. Oh. I don't remember... Ah! Oh, it's gonna be one of these now, isn't it? Do not remember this from the entry at all. Oh, more stairs, that's awesome. That's just, that's just beyond fantastic. That's incredible. I could not, and Amaze, my favorite. Can't think of any better thing I'd rather do with my Wednesday. <laughs> okay, I'm building up a tolerance. Wait, am I back where I came from? I think I'm back where I, no. No, I can't be. I can't be, I hate mazes and horror games. I hate them. The word. Hi. I'm a boop ya. I'm a boop ya. Oh, Gary's mud doesn't let me. I'm gonna try and reach forward. It pushes me away because it feels my body clipping into the wall. Alright, well, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna get a move on now, if that's okay with you. I feel like a... I feel like a neighbor in the 1940s just coming over and asking for sugar. Mrs. O'Leary hands me a cup through the window. Thanks, Mrs. O'Leary. You're a pal. Hi. It's the Cheshire Cat. What have you got for me? Oh, I can't... Maybe I have to open this? Oh, I get it. It was supposed to be a jump scare, but it's doing that thing again that I saw on GM Sears. Where, uh... Oops. Oh, I just started getting, like, pushed through the hallway. Okay. Next up, SCP-002. I'm actually really torn on this because this is one that I'm not familiar with at all. Should I be looking these up and reading what they're about, or should I just be playing the role of the hapless D-Class personnel and learning what they are firsthand? So I think what I'm going to do is alternate. 
Because I don't know, there's five more maps, including this one. I don't know what any of them are, so I'm going to alternate. This one I won't look up, the next one I will, and vice versa until we're done. SCP-002, Class Euclid. So dangerous, only if I initiate interaction. It looks like we have a workable control panel right here. That doesn't seem to do anything, but what about this button? What has that done? But you know, this is kind of what I love about SCP. It's the idea of having these anomalous objects that require testing to understand what they do and how they work. For example, I'd really like to know what this button does. But I guess I'll just have to get down there and find out. That door doesn't open. This one, however, does. And that's my ticket down there. There seems to be, like, a strange bubbling or gurgling sound coming from inside it. It kind of resembles a World War II era sea mine. But it's coated in, like, this weird fleshy substance. I'm assuming I don't want to touch it. Oh, there's actually a hatch on the side I can climb inside with a pool of blood at the bottom. Now before I do that, uh, is there anything I can do over here or are these just entrances to the chamber? No, just entrances. Okay, so what happens when I climb inside? Yep, this is life as a D-class. Oh, it's gonna make me crouch. You heard that, right? There was the sound of a door opening or closing. Uh, all right, let me in. It's like a room. I think there's supposed to be a door here, yeah. Oh, and it's full of the sounds of screaming. That's not gonna get annoying at all. Yeah, I don't know what it is with VR and certain types of doors not displaying correctly. We saw this in the previous map too, as well as uh, GM Sears. Let's try the same thing, but with this button pressed. And this also looks like it's something, but I can't figure out how to interact with it. Alright, let's get back down there. Huh. I, th I think what's supposed to be happening is I'm supposed to be able to see a door opening and inviting me in. Now the room is, like, fully furnished. I don't know if that's because I died before, or if it's because I activated that button. Okay. We're gonna play it cool now, right? We're not gonna have the same issue as before. Now I noticed that there were some... seemingly some electrical tethers connected to the object itself. I wonder if it's a matter of whether or not power is being supplied to it. Can I open this fridge? No? Yep. Okay. So what about this place, then? Okay, and this time it's allowing me to leave. So what happens if I go back upstairs and turn that button green again. I'll we'll turn it green once more. And we'll get down there and see what's changed. Now the furnishings are gone. And the results are the same. Yep. 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 Yep! Come on, is there something I can maybe do? Nope. That's what I thought. Of course, now I'm faced with a dilemma. What would happen if I were inside, getting killed, and somebody switched this button to red? 
Or conversely, what would happen if I were inside the furnished chamber and somebody switched it to green? I'll pay attention to that. I might come back to this with a friend. SCP-432 is a two-door steel storage cabinet. The interior dimensions of SCP-432 display significant disparity with the exterior. The doors open into an apparently extra-dimensional space, containing a large labyrinth complex comprised of an as-yet uncharted series of corridors. The exact size of the labyrinth complex to which SCP-432 connects cannot be accurately measured as each time the doors of the cabinet are closed and then reopened, the entrance created by the cabinet apparently moves to a different section of the maze. The fate of personnel within the maze when the door is closed is unknown, although remains discovered within the maze suggest starvation as a likely outcome. Other remains. Other remains. Other remains coupled with additional evidence gathered during exploration, suggests that the labyrinth contains a large, predatory inhabitant of indeterminate species, hereafter known as SCP-432-1. This right here is exactly what I was talking about in my Appeal of SCP video. I don't know any other medium that can so effectively communicate the horror of unknowns within directly communicated information. So right here, you know, we have our, your typical haunted object. It's basically a TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. But there's that added unknown of, yes, yeah, some carnivorous creature of indeterminate species roaming these halls. Nobody's seen it, and we're just going to leave it at that. We just know it's there. It's literally an article on the object, and yet it still manages to have that uncertainty, that unknown, that fear of what's in there. I can't open it myself. Maybe I have to push that button on the wall. Of course, the bloodstains on the floor kind of make it seem like something's come through before. I imagine that's why it's kept closed under normal circumstances. Well, I've already stated my opinion on mazes and horror games, but I suppose I'm going back into another one. Let me through. I don't like how the sound is cut out. Can I leave? Okay, so I can go in and come back out, but I imagine that once I lose sight of the doorway, that I'm going to lose that opportunity, aren't I? Oh, it's so dark in here. Then again, perhaps this requires a second player. Perhaps... Oh, boy. Uh, this is scary in the same way that GM Catacombs was scary. As you wander these tunnels, there's evidence of previous explorers who attempted the same thing. Blood from a mauling for whatever's wandering these corridors, and an open can of food from a gas leak. Now, it did mention these, but uh, I'm like Archer. I didn't read the, I didn't read the dossier. <laughs> I only skimmed over it, so I don't know if those are actually something that I should be aware of or if they don't do anything. That is a dead end. I don't like dead ends in an enclosed space like this. That means that if there's something coming up behind me, I'll have no opportunity to do anything about it. I guess we'll go this way. Oh, I think that's just a lighting bug. I believe on the other side of this is probably the entrance. I saw that light and I got all excited, thinking maybe I'd found something new. 
Yeah, I'm not typically a fan of mazes and horror games. Because I find that for the most part they're just really repetitive and frustrating. At least from a gameplay perspective. Now, last time did I go straight forward or did I go right? I already have no idea where I am. See, I kind of get more anxious when I'm running because... Yeah, I think I'm going back down the way I came. I kind of get more anxious when I'm running because... I feel like I'm making a lot of noise that is potentially going to attract something to my position. Yeah, I can't go that way even if I did walk through the gas. So let's try going this way instead. You hear that? I thought I heard something on my right. Which means we're gonna go any way but that way. A damaged wall? I don't see anything on the other side of it. It looks like it's just more tunnel. Maybe if I can get around to that other side, maybe it indicates something useful? Can't go that way. This, if the right goes down far enough, should take me to where the wall was damaged. There it is, right there. But nothing this way, so let's go back the other way. I really don't like turning around so fast in these dark, cramped tunnels. Because something in my brain just knows that I'm going to flick around and I'm only going to catch a couple of frames of something horrifying standing right behind me before I die. There's nothing here. And there's nothing here either. I think I've been to just about everything. I I'm kind of starting to think that maybe you need a second person to close the door behind you. Because I have no idea what I'm doing and I need to get a move on with this recording session, I've gone ahead and no-clipped into a random part of the tunnel, so I have no idea where I am. Wait. Is this part of the tunnel even accessible? Okay, I'm starting to think maybe some of these walls are meant to move or appear and disappear. And that maybe I need a second person for this to really work. I think I might need somebody to close the door. However, because I am doing cheating, perhaps I can close the door and then no clip through it. What happens if we do that? Close the door. No clip inside. Ow. Next up is SCP-015, and because I read the description of the last one, this one is going to be a little bit of on-the-job training. And I'm a little nervous because this is a much darker and more dingy environment than the previous sterile labs that we were started off in. And also, given that picture of a labyrinth of pipes and machinery, I'm kind of worried that this is going to be another maze. I'm starting to notice a theme here. Oh my. If this is to be another maze, it's definitely got a little bit more to it than the last one we looked at. Ugh. I've always hated that sound. Ugh. It just evokes feelings of thick muck coating the ground, like... Ugh. There's something about the way the sound is designed where... You can practically feel the tension of your boots sticking in the grime. It sounds like there's something else down here, too. Now I'm being pulled in a couple of different directions here. There's that pipe right there. 
But it also looks like I can crouch under these and get over to that grate, which looks to be under a spotlight of some kind. Hang on, let's... Now, even though I haven't read the description for this SCP, keep in mind that the links to each of these maps will be in the description of this video, and the description for each of these maps is the description of the SCP. So, if you're... If you're frustrated that I'm not explaining them, uh, those that'll all be at the links in the description. Doesn't seem like I can get through here. But that is unmistakably a bloodstain on the ground. Yeah, okay, I'm really happy. I was worried this was going to be another cheap maze, but this looks like it's going to be something else entirely. Those of you who have been with me for a while know that I hate crouching in VR. It's so irritating. And now it's even worse because I have new floors in my room. Which means no longer am I doing this on carpet. I'm doing it on vinyl. Not good for my knees and shins. Nor is this. This looks like uh, would be very, very stressful on the old ankles if I actually had to experience it myself. Ugh. Now one thing that I'm not experiencing is the texture. Of course, it's certainly giving me an idea through the buzzing in my ear. But just imagine what it would... Hi. Just imagine what it would be like to try and crawl through this tunnel. I mean, even just looking at the wetness of this texture and the gooiness in those reflections uh, it just looks like something I don't want to touch. I believe we found a way out now. I'm just assuming that I don't want to go in the direction of those looming glowing dragon eyes. Ah! Uh... I'm in some kind of goopy cage! What happened to me? Okay, so clearly, there's right and wrong choices to be made when progressing through this labyrinth. I guess it's just going to be down to trial and error, then. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I think this time, we'll be heading in the direction of that ominous twin glow down the leftmost path. Hello? Come get me. Coming out the same way as before, we learned that we don't want to go left. Not that it's going to let me anymore because that cage is still there. Along with my blood puddle. So what happens if we go right? Another choice to be made near instantly. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything down that way. Oh, no. There's a hole in the grate. So it may be possible to climb up there, but I guess we'll see afterwards. I'm doing this whole thing just kneeling on a pillow, so do not ask me to stand up. Once I've gotten down, I'm not getting back up. But there's a staircase right here, which I suspect will probably take us to the other side of that gate we were looking through before, correct? Oh no, it actually brings us up here. No. This isn't the grate that had the hole in it. There's a blood stain on the floor, so presumably that indicates that there's another trap right there. This would also be a prime spot for a trap. Ah, and there, there's another one. Come on. Come on. Come on! There we go. So I have to do it from the other side of the door. Oh, look at that. The pipes are wrapped around the desk. But there's normal pipes in that corner. So it's almost like these fleshy pipes have grown around this whole facility like vines. 
Like the whole thing is like one big predatory organism. Or parasitic. That's ungood. Uh, up onto the desk. It's the only safe place. Or maybe onto the normal pipes. Oh, what are these? Oh, am I being digested right now? That's not good. That's not good for anybody. Uh, except this place, maybe. I've just noticed there's another tunnel right there. With a much, much more grisly looking texture. But it doesn't look like I can get there without going by that presumably trap. There's another door on my right. But as we've come to learn, we can't trust anything about this place. Yep, yeah, just your skull deposited on the sink. Yep, that's kind of what I thought. Yep, and it's gassing me. And it's gassing me. Well, that was a record, like, five seconds before I... I know, right? This right here very clearly indicates a trap. But I guess it's fine. Maybe I have to stand directly in the middle for it to activate, or maybe it's not as surefire an indicator as I thought. Uh, in any case, this does not look promising for my health. What's it gonna do, electrocute me this time? Ugh. Nope, just another, just another pipe. Something that's kind of impressive. All of these traversable pipes have been different textures. There's actually an immense amount of custom work going on here. And it is actually quite disturbing to look at. Does anybody else see the grimacing skull in that texture right there? Bad stuff has happened to me. This was not a worthwhile use of my time. Hey buddy, what are you in for? Alright, one more attempt and then I'm gonna move on. And in this attempt, I'm gonna be going down that... sloped ramp into the abyss. Alright, last thing to try! <laughs> you know, that did jump scare me, but all I could think of was Mini-Me flying out of the vent. Alright, down this way... I never like ending up deeper underground. It's never, ever, ever a good thing. Doesn't look like there's anything I want to interact with down there. Oh, well, there is another tunnel. So many different directions to pull you in, but I guess that's the idea, is that it's just so many different paths and... Presumably only one perfect correct one. I feel like in that way, I, it kind of makes me wonder, had I read this entry, if there would be some pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Because if you were to really put the time into this and get it down and know the one perfect path that can lead you to the end of this, you would become like a stalker for this place. Not in the sense of the series of games, but of the movie in which the zone is basically a series of death traps and a stalker is someone who knows how to navigate through it. This is where I fell into before. This is not something I want to mess with. 
So I guess I'm going for that... Oh, there's two tunnels. Ooh. Uh, turning with the stick is making me really, really dizzy. I apologize if it's having the same effect on you. I will not be continuing to do this in future maps. Left and right. Choosing left completely arbitrarily. I think I need to crouch a little more. Ugh, the texture for that is so gross. Actually, uh, I wonder if this is where that other one comes out. Uh, it's like, it's like these things become more and more dead the further down we go. No. It, it, it's a strange look, and something that's really cool, because it's like an industrial-type thing made organic. Like, the pipes that would normally be associated with some kind of industrial oper operation have been turned into the innards of some great organism. Well, that's about the end of the road for me, I think. Just hit me with whatever you're going to hit me with. Hi. Yes, you're some very scary PNGs. Come on, come nibble me! SCP-354 is a pool of red liquid discovered in northern Canada. The liquid is of a consistency similar to that of human blood, hence the colloquial name, Blood Pond but it is not of a biological nature. Periodically, entities emerge from the pool and attempt to escape the enclosure. Thus far, nearly all creatures emerging from SCP-354 have been extremely hostile and highly dangerous. So what I'm gathering from that description is that what we're dealing with here is the River of Slime from Ghostbusters 2. And the first thing I'm noticing about this map is that it's not performing super well. I don't know to what extent you can see that, but I can definitely see some jitter in my movement here. Huh. It's like some kind of arctic facility. Now this is very different from the previous maps we've looked at. Hang on. It's actually a lot of containment area. Oh, wow, that's why. It's the whole containment area surrounding the pool. Now, what did it say? It said that periodically, entities will actually emerge from this goop and attempt to escape the enclosure. Wow. Science is so fascinating. Push the button. Uh, wasn't me. What did I do? Seriously, what did I do? Yeah, you better run. Uh, it was them. Okay, so that turned that off. But what did that do? Of course, even though I don't want to, I'm going to have to jump down there at some point. But before I do that, let's take a look at the rest of this map, because so far, we've yet to see, like, an entire facility like this. Bloodstain. Have we already had ourselves a containment breach? Uh, or is Mr. Nibbles just a little bit more nibbly with his food today? And then again, given that this is the SCP Foundation, who knows what Nibbles actually is? See. Uh.
Spawn control. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you're telling me you actually have control over what comes out and when. What happens if I push this button then? Oh, Lord. Oh, now the map's running even worse. Uh, I gotta get over there before they're all gone. They're having some kind of... They're having some kind of anomaly fight club over there. I want to watch. Oh, this is running so poorly, giving me nausea. Let me up, let me up, let me up, let me up. Ugh. Huh. Wow. I'm not used to experiencing a slideshow in VR. I'm gonna try something else. And our final map of the night, SCP-1346. I am only now realizing that Weebo and Stitch the series was basically SCP before SCP. Object class safe, but we'll see about that. From what I understand, this is another scary hallway, so hopefully it's a little bit different from some of the other mazes we've explored so far. Looking like it's gonna be that way. God, that is just such a don't like the sounds that are emanating out of that darkness. Okay. Off to a good start, I must say, if the goal is to be scared. There's just something so deeply... evil about that image. Actually, that's a camera there. And I noticed before that... Okay, so that's probably the feed from that camera. Are, are there other channels that I can switch to? No, it looks like that's it. I'm definitely going to be reading the pages for each of these on my own afterwards, because this has me really interested. This looks more like the door to a bank vault. And I can't help but realize that's not a normal door. We're sealed into this starting chamber just as much as we'd be sealed into here with this closed. Do I have to close it behind me? Doesn't seem so. It seems like... I need to stop procrastinating and get on with it. Uh, there's just something about the repetition of the lamps passing directly over my head. It's almost hypnotic, like a landing strip leading me into the dark. And this seems to be the point where they wish to begin observation. Hear another stuff in there now. Wow, imagine you just look up into this camera as the doors are closing. You're pleading with them to let you out, and then you see a reflection of something appearing behind you. Really dreaded turning around just now. Wee woo. Wee woo. My light's turning off as I go in. I can't bring the flashlight! It's turning off as I get into the darkness! It's like whatever's inhabiting this tunnel just won't allow light beyond this point. And also, even though by all accounts it should continue, like your brain expects this tunnel to continue the way it has been, but past the dark you can hear sounds that imply that it must open up, that there's huge objects being dragged around, that there's <laughs> like a whole world past this, but you just can't see it. You just have to walk through on faith. And right now I'm going to walk through on the faith that that sign said safe. Let's go. <laughs> okay, we're still alive. I just saw something fl flicker in the... This is weird. This is really weird in VR. Were those eyes? 
It's getting louder! And the image is scary. So. Safe. Safe, 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 safe. Safe. So those were Nuclear Ghosts SCP maps, and they are so cool. I'm always so impressed with the stuff that people are able to pull off in Gary's Mod. To keep it alive all these years later. Remember, this game's like 15 years old at this point. And also, it's such a collision of worlds between slices of internet culture, the source community, and the SCP community. And also, what better medium for interactive SCP media than Gary's Mod, a platform that's basically built around experimenting with different assets and stuff. And on top of that, somebody else has gone and modded Gary's Mod to include VR support, which allows me to experience them in the way that I have in this video. It's a little wonky sometimes, don't mind the fact that my arm is not exactly behaving the way I want it to right now. Like I said before, all six of these maps that I've been over today will be available at the links in the description if you want to try any of them out for yourself. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, and I actually just realized, before I get going, this video is most likely going to go out on Christmas Eve. So for anybody that's celebrating the holidays, or even in people who aren't, I wish you all happy holidays and a happy new year. And hopefully 2022 will be just as good as 2020 and 2021. <laughs> <laughs>